Hi friends, welcome back to playing tribute to Ace Attorney Dual Destinies. The uh, Ace Attorney 5, also known as because it is the fifth main series Ace Attorney game. Uh, man, I've, I've played a lot of these games. <laughs> because we had, this is the fifth one of the main series, but we also had uh, the Investigations uh, duo, I guess, just uh, to say. Uh, so, yeah, cool. Let's, uh, let's get into it. Um, last we left off, uh, we saw our animated anime cu cutscene, and uh, Apollo was attacked in the courthouse because, maybe because he knew something? Because he's like, oh, I'm going to try to find a way to prove Juniper innocent. So he must have found something uh, for him to be attacked. So uh, let's, let's find out. Oh man, that was a lot to type. I think we're still reeling. This isn't exactly how I envisioned the second day of this trial to start. But given how things ended yesterday... Good morning. Alright, how's Apollo? Is everything okay? Is he gonna make a full recovery? What's going on? Stop with all the dot dot dots! <laughs> yeah, no, that's fair. Mood sure is tense. Not that that's any surprise. Oh, hey! Did you read the pap paper this morning, boss? Huh? The paper? That came out of left field. You didn't read it? Then you don't know the big news! Somebody spotted an abominable snowman way up in the mountains. Tell me you know the difference between a paper and a tabloid, Athena. It might show up in the forest where you live, Junie. So you'd better watch out, okay? You really should read the story for yourself. I couldn't even begin to do it justice. Justice? <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> Huh? Oh, poor Apollo. It's all my fault. Athena! Oh, Junie! What was I thinking? I'm so sorry! What we found yesterday. It was not Apollo's dead body, thank goodness. He'd been assaulted by someone with a blow to his head and was lying unconscious. He rushed into the hospital right away, and it looks like he's going to pull through. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> that was too much wait time here. I mean, we all knew he was okay. He's a main character, but still. <laughs> but it was still quite a shock to stumble onto a scene like that. Is Miss Woods all right, Athena? Well, I managed to get her to stop crying. Now she's resting on that sofa over there. I guess she really feels responsible for what happened to Apollo. Poor Junie. She believes that the reason Apollo was attacked is because he was helping her look for something in that courtroom. Well, guess I can see why she'd think that. By the way, how are you doing? Who, me? Yeah, you. I know you're concerned about Miss Woods, but are you alright? Me? I I'm doing fine, boss. I mean, yeah, it was a huge shock, but I'm alright. People who've studied analytical psychology are great at times like these. After all, they've learned how to control their own emotions, too. Somehow I don't think it's as easy as she makes it sound. Yeah, look at Widget. He's in sad mode. See, it works for her, too. The mood matrix thing. I, I, in, I encourage you to look at Widget whenever she's talking to see what her feelings really are. But there's no denying she's a real trooper. Apollo doesn't remember a thing, does he? 
Yeah, he can't recall anything from the time right before he was assaulted. Nothing about what he was doing in the courtroom number four, or who assaulted him. The doctor said it's probably due to that hit, due to that hit he took at the head. To the head. Wow, sorry, I'm still stumbling over my words. It'll be a while, guys, I'm sorry. Assaulted in a court of law, I'm losing your memory at that. I know how that feels. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> the callbacks. <laughs> But who in the world would do such a thing, huh, Mr. Wright? Ugh, just wait till I get my hands on the coward who hurt our Apollo. Now, now, Athena. I thought you said you were in control of your emotions. Let's just focus on helping Miss Woods, okay? But I admit I'm just as upset as you. Uh, okay, boss. You're right. Apollo's assailant can wait until after we clear Junie's name. That's the spirit. Now, let's see. I better check the court record one more time before the trial starts. If you say so, boss. We've got our badge. Oh. Right, okay. The autopsy report. Were there more details to this? Oh, it was just a picture. We've discovered that that is Riney's tail. The switch is missing. There's the case. Memory serves when I have more than six pieces of evidence. I should be able to switch pages with this. Okay. Earth to Mr. Wright! When, ready whenever you are. Alright, let's get ready to rumble. You bet! With everything that happened with Apollo, I didn't have time for a proper investigation. I can't let that stop me, though. Ah, that's why. We didn't actually get to investigate. I have to get this right for Miss Wood's sake. And Apollo's, too. for the trial of Juniper Woods. Prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The defense is also ready, Your Honor. Now then, I believe I instructed the prosecution to further their investigation. Were you able to locate the remote switch in question? I'm afraid the remote switch is still missing, Your Honor. I must say I'm disappointed, Mr. Payne. Not angry, just disappointed. <laughs> wow! He pulled the I'm not angry, just disappointed line. I apologize, Your Honor. Aha. Huh. Looks like the prosecution is just as unprepared as I am. There is a separate matter, however, that I would like to bring up during this trial. A separate matter, you say? And what might that be? I assume you are aware that another incident occurred during yesterday's trial. I'm speaking, of course, of the assault on Mr. Justice in the ruins of the courtroom number four. Uh, why is he bringing that up? Yes, what a truly harrowing experience it must have been for Mr. Justice. At, a time, at the time of the attack, Mr. Justice was not alone. He was with the defendant, Miss Juniper Woods. See, somehow I knew he was going to bring this up. Somehow I knew it was going to be like, oh, Juniper was with him, so he was attacked by her, but really he was attacked after she left, so, you know, the whole last to see the victim and blah, blah, blah. He isn't going where I think he's going with this, is he? He is. Jesus. The prosecution wishes to indict Ms. Woods in the charge of Mr. Justice's assault. Order! Order in the court! Mr. Payton, the incident under deliberation here is the courtroom bomb. The assault on Mr. Justice has nothing to do with this trial. Ah, uh, but I believe there is a connection between this case and Mr. Justice's assault. Well, at least I won't have to work hard arguing that. Please take a moment to consider these facts. Both events occurred in courtroom number four. Ooh, we have a layout. This is the location in courtroom number four where the unconscious Mr. Justice was discovered. As you can see, it's quite close to where Detective Arm's body was found. Well, I would hope so. Everything else is rubble. The 
question is, why did the culprit feel the need to maliciously attack Mr. Justice? Because he found something, I'm telling you. Oh, okay. Wait, why is his arm stretched like that? I don't remember that being a thing. I just remember him being like, wasn't he more like scarecrow armed? But like upward? Like claw arm? I don't know how to describe it without like showing it. I thought both arms were kind of like straight out and then bent at the elbow upward. Why, indeed. Now, what do you believe their motive to be, Mr. Payne? I believe Mr. Justice found something in that courtroom while Ms. Woods was with him. Evidence that fingered her as the perpetrator of the bombing. You mean you found some incriminating evidence? Precisely. And so I surmise that the defendant picked up a piece of rubble and hit Mr. Justice on the back of the head in order to silence him. Objection! Judy would never do such a thing. She was devastated when we found Apollo hurt like that. Uh, Miss X, please control your outbursts. Ahem, is the prosecution's belief that by deliberating on Mr. Justice's assault, we will draw ever closer to the truth of the courtroom bombing itself. Yes, yes, we will. I'm totally for this, Mr. Payne. I just don't. It wasn't Junie, obviously. It wasn't Juniper. But, uh, we will find the assailant, nonetheless. Very well. Mrs. Woods is hereby officially indicted on the charge of assaulting Mr. Justice. What? Why are you listening to Mr. Toupay over there? Though, considering our con conversation yesterday... Figure something out. Yep. Wonder what he found. Look for stuff to clear her name. Yep. Maybe the two incidents really are related after all. I would like to start by hearing from the defendant herself. Very well, Bailiff. Please bring Miss Woods to the witness stand. Oh boy, she's nervous again. I'm sorry. I just can't seem to stop. Woods. I guess she's still really upset about Apollo. Miss Woods, you went to the ruins of courtroom number four with Mr. Justice, did you not? Yes, I did. Good, good. If you would then please testify about what happened to the court. At least he's being nice to her now. I'm not badgering her, jeez. During the trial yesterday, I was overcome by a fit of coughing. Apollo stayed with me and we went to the courtroom ruins together. But then I was called back to this courtroom to give testimony. Apollo insisted on staying behind in courtroom number four. I swear I didn't attack Apollo. Why would I ever hurt such a kind person? So, Mr. Justice stayed by your side while you were feeling unwell. What an admirable young man. I thought his loud voice was his only outstanding feature. <laughs> Cords of steel. <laughs> he may look like a little imp at times, but Apollo can be really nice, too. I hope she didn't hurt her wrist backhanding that one out. <laughs> but one has to wonder. Why did Mr. Justice stay behind in the ruins? I think Apollo might have figured something out. Something? What kind of something? Something to do with... The courtroom bombing kind of something. I think. Oh ho! New evidence for the case, was it? That's very big kind of something indeed. All of them talking. Man, they are really loud in this game. I believe so. He mentioned looking for some evidence while I was called away. Objection! When I was called away. Just as I thought, there is a connection between the two incidents. But the defendant had told a very big lie, Your Honor. What is what lie is that? When she learned Mr. Justice would be looking for evidence, she attacked him. She attacked him to give herself a chance to destroy that evidence. N no, I, I never. Objection. Ms. Woods repaid Mr. Justice's kindness with violence. We found the proof of her foul deed here in the courtroom ruins. I'm sorry? Wow. 
What on earth? Is that written in blood? Also, if he was not unconscious, why would he be able to write that out? That just makes zero sense. The, it's always the name thing. It's always the, oh, I'm gonna write the name of my killer. Like, come on, man. Who's buying this? Does anyone ever buy this anymore? This has been happening way too many times. Do you see it there in front of Mr. Justice's right hand? Witness the message he left us. It's written in blood. W-O-O-D-S. What is that? That's right, Your Honor. It says Woods in capital letters. What? I submit that Mr. Justice left us with the name of his attacker before he fainted. An unlikely story, friend. Oh, that can't be true. Why would Apollo write my name? Mr. Wright, the nerve of him leaving that message. Why would he do this? Uh, hey, don't take it out on me. I don't understand it any more than you do. We discovered Apollo yesterday. Apollo. Oh. Ah. I didn't even have a chance to rush over to him. As soon as security heard Athena scream, they ran in and cor cordoned off the area. After that, they were in the courtroom number four with Apollo the whole time. We couldn't investigate anything ourselves and had to leave everything to police. Still, I never thought they would find some bloody writing there. No. Please begin your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. Again, so unlikely. Like, come on, man. You've, you've done this before. You've handled several cases with this problem. In, like, every game. Okay, I don't have to press everything. Went to the courtroom ruins. Called back to the courtroom. Apollo insisted on staying behind. Let's talk about that. Better not ask her about Apollo. I know. I'll use some small talk here to get her to relax a bit. Do you have any hobbies, Miss Woods? <laughs> hobbies? Oh, well, I love growing vegetables in my garden. And I love to knit. I like sewing, too. I made this all for myself. Keep it up, Mr. Wright. It's working. Now ask her if she has a crush on anyone. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. That's so stupid. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> So is there anyone in particular you like right now? You do know that that's talking about Apollo if you ask her about a crush, right? Is that question even remotely related to this case? To this case? Uh, no. Not really. Mr. Wright, you refrain from asking questions unrelated to the case at hand. Sorry, Your Honor. I just wanted to brownie points. Eh, Miss Woods, please continue with your testimony. So that was a pointless thing to press, apparently. You're telling the court about your attack on Mr. Justice. I was gonna... I was trying to get into, like, what he found or what he saw, but... Okay. Hold it! So you think Mr. Justice is kind? He's very kind. He rescued me. He's like the sun. Strong and warm. He makes me feel strong, too. The only adjectives I associate with the sun are sweltering and oppressive. But then Apollo got hurt and... and it's all my fault! Did you need... Apollo's going to be fine! He's just like the sun, right? Well, the sun doesn't just drop out of the sky. You really think he'll be fine? <laughs> but the sun does go down at night. Shut up, man. <laughs> You're not helping. <laughs> then that means Apollo could... <laughs> Mr. Payne, I do not think much of men who make young ladies cry. Yeah. Look, it's obvious Junie didn't attack Apollo. I mean, that's just ridiculous. Look at how her screen also changes colors with her emotions. Right, I agree. They must have gone to look for bum rap Ryan together. Why do they need to find it so badly that they'd go, th that they'd go through all that trouble? Better try to find out more. Okay, why did you go? Why exactly did you go to the courtroom rounds? We went to look for my medicine. To stop my coughing. 
Your medicine? Why would your medicine be in courtroom number four? I trapped it in the heat of the moment. Oh, Bum Rep Riney is also a, like a, a purse thing, so it had her medicine in it. Bum Rap Riney, he was keeping my medicine safe for me. He has a little compartment that I can put things in, you see? And Phony Fanti had the same type of pack pocket. That's where the bomb was inserted. I put my medicine for my coughing fits inside Bum Rap Riney. When I told Apollo about it, he said he'd help me go look for it. There was so much rubble in there. I was worried, but there was no rubble or anything in front of the witness stand. So when we got inside, Apollo went straight there. And started looking for my Riney in that area. No rubble in front of the witness stand. Does that line up with what we know? Yes, it does. There's a witness stand. Unless that's rubble, but I think that's the platform. Yeah. It was so nice of him to do that for me, in spite of all his injuries. Apollo is so strong and kind, just like the trees of the forest. So now he's like the trees? The way she makes him sound, you'd think Apollo was some kind of ancient god. <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> So that's why you went to the ruins. I see. That seems to be quite a proven fact. Please add it to your testimony. Okay. Good, good. Apollo started looking for Bum Rep Riney near the witness stand where there was no rubble. Hold it! There was no rubble, right? I. I looked at the map. The area around the witness stand, are you sure about that? Yeah, there's no, there's no rubble there. Like where he was found. I don't know how much it's trying to, trying to tell me. If I can't find, like if, if this goes on, I will present the map because, I don't know. It's like, it's making such a big point about that. So it's making me think that the game is like, hey, this is wrong. I'm sorry, did I say something wrong? No, no, of course not. I was just testing my hearing. It's not upset her. It's not upset her. Yes, I'm sure that's where we searched first. Where we searched first. Do I have to go back to the board? Where we searched first, so not necessarily where he ended up. Objection! So he started his search with a witness stand, you say? That's right. I guess maybe he wanted to start from the furthest point in the room. He was being so brave. And strong. But that's odd. Under the circumstances, he should have been, shouldn't have been capable of that. But he was! And he still is! He might not look it, but he really is brave and kind, too. Uh, <laughs> no, that's not the part I'm finding fault with. Someone has a crush on Apollo. What you are claiming is something that no one should have been able to do. But I should think that anyone can be brave and kind if they want to be Mr. Right. Uh, true, anyone can be brave and kind. But if you would please take a look at this diagram. With the courtroom in the state, how was it possible to walk from the witness up to the witness stand? So is that rubble? I thought that was just a stand. I guess it is rubble. Oh! I see your point. Oh, I see your point. The rubble blocks off access to the area around the witness stand. Hmm. Does such a tiny inconsistency even matter? Perhaps the witness is simply misremembering it. Ugh. Great. Now I'm not so sure it matters. A real man doesn't make mountains out of molehills, you know. But that's precisely what Mr. Wright does best. I call slander, your honor. So, was it really impossible? Approach the witness stand. I have to say it's a bit hard to tell with any accuracy from just a diagram. Mr. Pink, do you have any other photos of the crime scene? Ah, uh, let me see, Your Honor. Ah, yes. I have one more. Oh, it's a bomb case! That's why it was so square. 
I wasn't understanding why it was like that. It's the bo it's the bomb case. Here it is. It's a more pulled back version of the photo I presented before. Huh? What's that hunk of metal on wheels? Mr. Payne, is the metallic object in that photo Mr. Tonight's bomb transport case? That's right. Is there some problem? Ah, oh, yes. The transport case was there in the court of number four when the bomb went off. Must have been there ever since. Oh, that's it. Miss Woods, have you remembered something? Yes. I just realized. Its position. It's different from before. Its position. The position of what? Um, the position of that big metal thing. The bomb transport case? Yes. When Apollo and I went there, it was in a different place. Where the cases in the photo was open space, so it was easy to search the stand. I see. So where was the transport case when you and Mr. Justice saw it? As I recall, I think it was more to the right. To the right. Then that means it was over top of the words. In that case, the case was over there at the time of Apollo's attack. Hmm. Who cares where the transport case was when? What difference does it make? It has nothing at all to do with what we were talking about. Objection! Where the transport case was has everything to do with this discussion. In fact, it's so important that it's enough to turn the prosecution's argument on its ear. What? Well, that certainly sounds very relevant indeed. And you sound as though you know where the case was at the time of the attack. Yes, Your Honor. This diagram represents this crime scene as shown in the photo. And this is where the transport case was at the time of the assault on Mr. Justice. Alright, I have this. The bomb transport case was here at the time of Apollo's attack. Take that! Your Honor? I assert that this is where the transport was at the time of the assault. But that's... Inconceivable! Miss Woods, was this where the transport case was when you saw it? Yes! Yes, that's where it was. Thank you, Miss Woods. I'm sure the court has noted an interesting fact about this position. The transport case covers up the writing and blood. Exactly. If the transport case was in that position at the time of the assault, then no message could have been written there because the case was in the way. Which leads us to conclude that Mr. Justice couldn't have left the bloody writing. Objection! Why should we believe the defendant's claim that the case was in a different position? She's obviously lying. Objection! The fact that this case was moved after the assault on Mr. Justice is proved by more than just Ms. Wood's testimony alone. Why? And where is this proof you're talking about? It's right here, in the crime photo. <clears throat> I'm keen to see this proof myself, Miss Wright. Oh, the wheel smarts. The wheel marks. The wheel smarts. What in the photo indicates the transport case was moved? Um, okay, I want to I wanna point to the... Take that! Wheels. Please take a look at the mark that runs over Mr. Justice's bandages here. Oh good, I, I clicked the right spot. I guess the fact that I s clicked the, uh, the bandages was the important thing. I see it, but what is it? This mark was made by one of the ca casters from the transport case carrying the bomb. This case was moved and ran over his bandages. In other words, the transport case was originally to the right of Mr. Justice. Then after Mr. Justice was assaulted, the transport case was moved. What? Just as Ms. Woods said, the case was covering the writing at the time of the assault. Therefore, it was impossible for Mr. Justice to have left that message in blood. No! You did it, boss! It was a real nail-biter, but you pulled it off! Yep, it should bring down the prosecution's claim like a house of cards. Order! Order in the court! Mr. White, that was a very clever deduction. Ah, it was nothing, Your Honor. Nothing but pure genius. Take that. Boss, I'm sensing a definite smug and braggy vibe coming off of you. Mm. Oh, just one more question, Mr. Wright. 
Yes, Your Honor. If Mr. Justice didn't leave this message in blood, then who did? Huh? What? Oh! Well. Looks like I should have taken that train of thought through to the last station. Well, well. I've heard a lot about this. So this is Mr. Wright's famous bluffing technique, isn't it? Ah, this feeling brings back memories of the old days. Back when you carved out a way for yourself by bluffing your way through thick and thin. Gee, Mr. Wright, the judge kind of makes you sound no better than a two-bit con man. You made your arguments with such confidence, Mr. Wright. Now I'd like to hear your answer with just as much confidence. Hey, until the judge asked the question, you didn't catch on either, Buster. But what now, boss? <laughs> I hope you didn't bluff your way into a corner. Think for this. Think. There must be a way through this. I have to dig my way to the truth somehow. Who could have written that message in blood? The culprit, of course. They're trying to pin the blame. Apollo didn't leave that bloody writing. Maybe it was Apollo's attacker who wrote it and made it look like Apollo did it. Seems like the most reasonable explanation. But wait a minute, I just realized something, boss. What is it? Look at the amount of blood in the photo. It doesn't look like Apollo bled very much. I wonder if it's even possible to write out woods with just this much. Hey, you're right. Oh. Good thing Apollo didn't lose that much blood. That might be a factor to why he survived the assault. And since there was so little blood, that pretty much rolls out his attacker, huh? I guess so, but if it wasn't his attacker, who else could it have been? Who could have written that message in blood? Someone else! If it wasn't Apollo, who could have left the bloody message? really want to do this? I, I remember now what the punchline is. So, yeah, just putting that out there, I know what's going on here. Um, do I really want to present Candace R? the person who wrote it when we're still trying to defend Juniper from being accused. To be honest, I don't actually have any real proof of this. But I've come this far. There's no turning back now. Besides Apollo, there was one more person who shed blood at this crime scene. A person who shed blood? You don't mean. Yes, but now I'm, now I'm presenting that she wrote this message Woods, but Ugh, that's okay. It'll 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 play out. I'm acting I'm acting like this is like, oh no, what how am I going to dig myself out of here? It's like I know the punchline, so I know that we're gonna we're gonna be fine. It's just really a, a very roundabout way of getting there. Because that's how the game goes. You need to build to the to the punchline. Oh, but I do. I believe it was Candace Arm who left behind this message in blood. What? Again, remember the message says Woods, be very careful. What? Detective Arm? You sure you know what you're doing here? Um, not really. Objection! What kind of ridiculous assertion is that? If you had said the attacker left the message to throw people off, it might have made sense. At first glance, that would seem to be the most reasonable explanation. However, Apollo didn't shed enough blood to write such an extensive message. Oh. Ah, I see. The photo makes it clear that there was enough blood to write all those letters. And Mr. Justice did survive. I suppose he didn't bleed very extensively in that case. But why would Detective Arm write the defendant's name? There's no connection between the two whatsoever. I don't even know the lady who was killed. No connection between the defendant and the victim. 
they had never even met each other. That's very true. Then, let's see. Maybe the intended meaning of the message is not what it appears to be. The intended meaning. Not what it appears to be? Maybe the message was not intended to be woods. Coming from you, that's quite the bold statement, Mr. Wright. You wish to assert that this bloody writing could have some other meaning? Yes, Your Honor. Hmm. There's something I pulled out of a wormhole. It could turn out to be true, right? Objection! Hmm. It's good to be back with, uh, with the bluffing. <laughs> it clearly says woods, as anyone can plainly see. What other meaning could it possibly have? Objection! But Candace Arm was a detective. Maybe Woods only means something to the police. Like a police scanner code, for example. Hmm, I didn't think of that. <laughs> you may have tricked his honor, but you'll never get the best of me. I have a thing for studying on the weekends, as you may have already guessed. And there is no such radio code as Woods in the state, dear Mr. Wright. Is that a fact? <laughs> Don't look at me. I know about as much as you do about the police codes. Enough of this. I was quite taken with the defense's new theory. But if they can't substantiate it with anything, then I must end things here. No, please wait, Your Honor. Very well. Before we discuss this theory any further, I demand a plausible explanation. So, Mr. Wright, what is the true meaning of this bloody writing? Well, I believe it's, uh... And no stalling! If you can't come up with an answer quickly, I will declare this discussion officially over. I'm in trouble now. What other meaning could it have besides the obvious one? Maybe it means something in another language? Or maybe it's a code? Think, Phoenix! You can do this! Which piece of evidence will tell us what the word woods really means? Have you guys cracked the code? I want to look at this again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the way it, it works so well. Do you see woods? I see woods are... It's... L... Whoops. It's L1001 and then uh, 5. And then the, the 1 is closed as a D. The L and the 1 are connected with a line. And the 5 is rounded out. So, take that! The bomb transport case. I've about had enough to hear with your shenanigans, Mister Wright. Take a look at the numbers on this case, Your Honor. L one zero zero one five R. Doesn't this string look vaguely familiar? L one hundred. What that does have to do? With, what does that have to do with anything? <laughs> what could those numbers possibly have to do with the case at hand? Now please take a look at the bloody writing shown in the crime photo. Oh, I think I see it! That a girl. That's one on my side. It says woods. Or you could say it's a horse of a different color, Your Honor. The first character isn't a W, it's actually an L and a 1. The next two are zeros. Oh! My goodness! The true meaning behind the bloody writing isn't Ms. Wood's name. It's a number engraved on this bomb transport case. Objection! What are you talking about? The next part doesn't make any sense! The next number is on 1, but the bloody writing says D! Objection! 
But the number on the case in the bloody writing can be made to match up quite easily. Erase a line. All you have to do is erase one line from the writing. Erase a line from where? But oh, okay, I'm sorry. I thought I thought it was talking about the D specifically. I'm sorry. You know that you know that I already said you know that I knew it because I explained what it was. It's uh it's the line from the D and then the line connecting the L and the one. I'm sorry. I thought you were just talking about the D. Don't lead me in one direction game and expect me to tell you all the things. You you already said it was an L and a one. Erase two lines. Please erase the third downward stroke of the W and the curved part of the D. Oh yeah, see, you can see part of the R. Well, would you like that? Yellice? <laughs> no, Your Honor, it isn't meant to be read as a word. It's the number L, 10015. Which, if you take away the initial, the final R, is the exact same number that's on the bomb transport case. Objection! <laughs> Erase two lines and they match up, you say. Well, I can change anything into anything else simply by erasing two lines. What if we erase two lines from your name? Would you be happy as Mr. Rai? Oh, well, would you, Mr. Rai? The only right spelling is right. Okay, I'm doing pretty well here, and I think I've drawn the right conclusion. Detective Arm's real message to us is the bomb transport case. Your Honor, the two lines were added by the real culprit to intentionally mislead people. What? The original message Detective Arm left behind was that transport case number. But whoever assaulted Apollo changed the message. If you're right, boss, then what do you suppose Detective Arm was trying to tell us? Question. What does this number represent? Do you see this number here? That is my identification number. Candace Arm lost her life in the courtroom bombing. Her dying message could only have had one purpose. But no! To tell us the name of the one responsible for the bombing. Spence, Mr. Wright, tell us who she was trying to name. The culprit that the victim was trying to identify is none other Take that. than Ted Tonate. Detonate! The defense wishes to indict Mr. Ted Tonate to the state charge of courtroom bombing. Ted Tonate? Apparently, disabling bombs isn't Mr. Tonate's only specialty. Somehow the victim must have realized that he was the bomber. So when she was caught in the blast, she left his bomb transport case number as her dying message. She used Mr. Tonate's own ID number to finger him for the crime. Objection! Why would anyone go out of their way to write an ID number? Wouldn't they simply write the person's name? He's got a good point there. What would you have to say to that, Mr. Wright? Only Detective Arm would know the answer to that, but allow me to offer a theory. Perhaps Detective Arm couldn't recall Mr. Tonate's name in the heat of the moment. As I recall, this is the first meeting between the two. It's entirely possible they wouldn't have been familiar with each other. Or maybe using the ID number was a way to hide its true meaning from the real culprit, thus lowering the odds that it would erase the bloody writing. But they would erase the bloody writing. But no matter what the reason, the important thing and the meaning behind the message. The fact remains she wrote Mr. Tonate's ID number. Objection! Now just one moment here. There hasn't been any proof yet that it was indeed Detective Arm who wrote it. The bloody writing wasn't found during the investigation after the blast. If Detective Arm had left the message, it should have been found at that time. Objection! Naturally, Mr. Tonate hid it before anyone could discover it. And there's a simple explanation for how he was able to do so. But what? Tony was able to cover the message up because he was the first to find the body. The first person to discover the bloody writing was Mr. Tony himself. First one on the scene. When Mr. Tony saw the victim had written his ID number, 
He used the bomb transport case to cover up the bloody writing as a stopgap measure. Oh, so that's why the message in blood was under the transport case. He didn't have enough time to try to scrub away the writing. If he didn't report the body right away, he would look suspicious. So, those letters lived on to serve another function. And Mr. Tony used them in another incident. Oh, with the assault on Mr. Justice. Exactly. Mr. Tony hit upon a plan to use the body right the bloody writing for his own purposes. So he didn't clean it away. Instead, he made it look like Mr. Justice wrote it. By adding two lines to the writing that Detective Arm left behind. He changed the meaning of the message. He made it look like Mr. Justice was accusing Miss Woods of the attack. So that means the only person who could have altered the bloody writing was the courtroom bomber. He was the same person as that assaulted Mr. Justice. And that person is Ted Tonate. Order in the court, order, I say. It looks like we will have to hear from the bomb specialist himself. Mr. Payton, please have Mr. Tony take the witness stand. Mm. Yes, Your Honor. That was great, Mr. Wright! Just doing what I do best, which is flying by the seat of my pants. Yeah. I've finally drawn Mr. Tony back into the witness stand. Looks like you'll get your wish, Goggle Man. Now watch me take your lies apart. Mr. Tonight, I'm afraid we have a few more questions for you. I understand the situation, Your Honor. I was keeping a close eye on the proceedings from the gallery. The allegations are all laughable. Objection! I wouldn't be laughing if I were you, Mr. Tony. The message in blood matches your ID number. The same ID number that is there on that bomb transport case. Such a far-fetched theory. No better than a tangled ball of wires. I'll have them untangled for you in no time at all. You were the first person on the scene after Detective Arm left her message in blood. You were the only one who could have hidden the writing, and it used it again later. I see, times two. But then, let me ask you. Do you have an- Oh, it's I see, I see. <laughs> do you have any proof that Detective Arm wrote that message? That's a very good question. Do you, Mr. Wright? The best way to prove that Detective Arm wrote that message. We could analyze the DNA and see that it is her blood. The handwriting, it's just like lines and zeros. It's lines and circles. I don't think the handwriting can be any, any good. Your Honor, I request that a DNA test be performed on the blood itself. Once we know whose it is, it'll be obvious as to who wrote the message. Very well. Bailiff, there's been a request for a DNA test in the forensic team. Yes, Your Honor! It'll be some time before we have the results from the analysis. Till then, let's hear more from the police. I would like nothing more, Your Honor. I want the court to hear how ridiculous the defense theory is. I admit I was the first one on the scene after the explosion, but there was no bloody writing there at the time. Anyway, there is no way Detective Arm could have written it. She struck her head on rubble and died near the courtroom entrance. She was too far away from where the bloody message was found. So you're saying that the victim's body was nowhere near the, where the writing was. Well, clearly it was moved. Precisely. It is as plain as day that she could not have written it. It's true that the body was discovered near the entrance to the courtroom. Please have a look at this crime scene photo. As you can see, there's blood on the rubble near the victim's body. She must have died after hitting her head there. Right? Let me cross-examine the witness. 
Do you have what it takes to take my infallible testimony apart? You know, the 3D images actually look pretty good. It takes some getting used to for some of the pieces of it, but some of them translate very well. Why do you say that, buddy? If she didn't write it, then who do you propose did? Mr. Justice, of course. Just before dying, he wrote the name of his attacker, Juniper Woods. He didn't die! A, a final message from your poor subordinate. Poor Mr. Justice, I'm starting to get all the misty eyed. Uh, Apollo is not dead, folks. So, how can you be sure it wasn't Detective Arm who wrote the message? It is very simple. Talking in this robotic voice is making me, like, feel like monotone and boring. So, I apologize if you're feeling it. <laughs> Hold it! Do you imagine she was thrown back by the force of the blast? A bomb can inflict damage not only from the explosion itself but also substantial secondary damage from the blast wind. Detective Arm unfortunately hit her head in some rubble. It's stated on her autopsy report as well. Cause of death, trauma to the back of the head. Huh, the autopsy report. Better take another look at that. Now, do you see? Detective Arm could not have written that message. The reason for that being... Okay, but it was a flat thing. We know that. The, the autopsy report said it was... She hit her head on something flat. That is not flat, and this is where I'm getting problems. Trauma to back of head caused by impact with a flat object. Is that what it's, it's aiming me towards? Because it's all like, oh, I should look at the autopsy report. And I've had this issue with the fact that it said flat, but it's it's clearly not... I mean, I might as well. Go with my gut, right? That's what I've learned in the past. Go with my gut. Objection! Go with my gut! Yeah! <laughs> you are a terrible liar, Mr. Tonate. Which is interesting, considering you just speak in the robotic voice the whole time and just type stuff. Take a look at the autopsy. Specifically, the part about Detective Arm's head injury. Cause of death... Trauma to the back of the head caused by impact with a flat object. Yes, what about it? Now take a good look at the bloody piece of rubble. It's sharp and pointed. <laughs> hey, you're right, boss. It is pointy. Just like your hair. That's his eyes, isn't it? What could be the meaning of this contradiction? I believe it means the victim did not hit her head on this piece of rubble. The blood stain you see is just another fabrication. Its purpose is to mislead us into thinking the victim died near the courtroom en entrance. Are you claiming Colbert moved the victim's body? That's exactly what I'm claiming. The victim hit her head at some other location. Most likely on the floor or some other flat surface. And this location was somewhere near where the bloody writing was found. In that case, she definitely could have written the message. Your Honor, I have the results of the bloodstain analysis. Ah, oh, very good time. Let's take a look. In this report, the message was written in Detective Arms' blood. And as the defense claims, only parts of the message that were added afterwards were written in Mr. Justice's blood. It would appear that the defense's assertion is correct after all. Woo. Yes! You did it! You were right, boss! Now I have to drive it home. I'll have to take a good look at the blood right analysis later. And by later, I mean right now. Did you really just type 111? DNA analysis definitely proves the blood of the writing to be that of the victim, Candace Arm. However, the lines that were added later were found to be written in the blood of Apollo Justice. Okay, 
That's what he said. I thought there was going to be something more. Mr. Toon, it is now apparent that you have told several lies to this court. I hope you have some sort of explanation for yourself. He is sweating over his mask, which is weird. That means his hat is sweating. Fine, I will confess. You will? But then why are you so calm? This time, I will tell the truth. What are you getting at, buddy? The truth. It is true that Detective Arm wrote my ID number. She very plainly wrote L10015R. I was shocked. But I did not detonate the bomb. Detective Arm must have mistaken me for the real bomber. Not wanting to be accused, I moved the body and covered the writing. My bad. <laughs> I love his, like, tricky little eyes. I see. So it's your assertion that you merely moved the body, is that it? That is correct. I did not kill Detective Arm. Oh, well, if that's all you did, then. Wait a minute. That in of itself is a criminal act. Glad to see you're finally crossed that finish line, Your Honor. Very well, then you cross examination, please, Mr. Wright. Hold it! Always loving the, loving the music. So you admit that you actually did see the bloody writing that Detective Arm left. My bad. I should have said so from the outset. And you are sure it was your ID number? I am sure. It was definitely my ID number. That number was assigned exclusively to me by the police department. The number is assigned to my goggles as well. <laughs> okay, that's a random fact. <laughs> so those funky things were provided by the police department. Although these are special goggles customized by me personally. Speaking of personalized, these sunglasses of mine were custom made as well. They were specially created to be particularly dark and shiny. Speaking of special, my gaffle was made of mahogany and was custom made as well. It was specially created to make a particularly re loud and resonating sound. Wish I had something to brag about. Be all that as it may, I just want to reconfirm you saw the bloody writing clearly that it was your ID number. That is correct. My ID number was written in blood on the floor. Hold it! L10015R. And that was written after the bomb went off in the courtroom. Correct. I didn't know why she would write it, so it sent me into a panic. I were in his shoes, I guess he would have psyched me out too. I can't imagine coming across the message Sykes written in blood. If I saw a gasp in pain written in blood, I'd certainly made a gasp. Rest assured, Mr. Tony, I understand how you must have felt. That's quite a conversation that we're having here. If you saw your name written in blood, that is an interesting thing to think about. <laughs> You're welcome for that. I guess rather the game says you're welcome. And so you discovered your ID number written in blood at the scene, and... That is right. I saw it with my own eyes. It's very clearly said L10015R. But I did not detonate the bomb there. Yeah, I'm sure you're gonna, you're gonna keep saying that until you finally admit to what you did. Didn't you? The victim may have special knowledge of who the bomber was. I have no idea what thoughts Detective Arm may have had inside her head. It is not like I ever dismantled her mind to check. Wait, he typed that while he was dismantling the bomb? Why did, was that in yellow robotic text? Mr. Wright, if you have suspicions about the witness, let's see your proof. Evidence is everything in a court of law. Even school children know that. How many years have you been a defense attorney now? Well, if you count the seven year break. <laughs> Cut me some slack, will you? Don't feel bad, boss. You just got your attorney's badge back, after all. In that sense, you're still more of a beginner than I am. I suppose I should be thankful you're not a licensed psychologist. Mr. Jimmy, please continue with your testimony. With pleasure. My ID number was left at the scene, but... Hold it! 
how would she do that? By mistaken, do you mean you had nothing to do with the explosion? That is correct. That is why I was so shocked when I saw my ID number. The victim may have suspected Mr. Tonage for no reason other than the fact that, as the bomb specialist, he was in charge of the bomb. In other words, a false accusation. Vocal, sorry, a vocational discrimination, I say. I didn't support discrimination of any kind. Well spoken, Your Honor. If the victim had been found to be killed with a gavel, this blue suit over there probably would have pinned the crime on you. He would? Well, that just wouldn't do. Mr. Wright, if you dare try to do anything on me, I will find you in contempt of court. But I've never even tried to harm a hair on a strand of your beard, Your Honor. Well said, Mr. Payne, because I am so closely associated with bumps. I was afraid I would be prosecuted if anyone saw the bloody writing. You're bad. This is a criminal offense, dude. You didn't think to clean away the bloody writing? I didn't have time. By the time I found the message, the blood was already dry. The police were waiting just outside for me to secure the room. And I still had to move the body. I was in a panic. With no time to spare, I temporarily covered the writing with my case. Didn't you think the police would find it during their investigation? Regulation stipulates only specialists may touch transport cases. Because of the danger, you see. I thought I would clean up the writing once they were finished. My bad. My bad? Does he really think that would just magically smooth everything over? He's not even apologizing. He's just saying my bad. This guy is someone else. And I don't believe Detective Arm's dying message was just a mistake. He won't wriggle out this one that easily. What did Mr. Tony see when he first discovered the bloody writing? There has to be a contradiction in his testimony somewhere. Oh, wait. I said this. Objection! I said this earlier. You can't see the R. Because of the explosion. But if she wrote the thing after the explosion... So am I say we're I think I'm about to say that she was killed before the explosion. Or at least... No, because that's impossible. Because she was there in the courthouse. Huh. I just want to make doubly sure that L10015R is really what you saw written in blood. Yes, it very clearly said L10015R. But that's odd because that's not what I see. Objection! What on earth are you babbling on about? Wasn't it you who claimed that the bloody writing was his ID number in the first place? Did you get a look at the photo in the bloody writing analysis? Now tell me, does it really say L10015R? Eep! Something is missing, isn't it? And that something is the final R. What is the meaning of this, Mr. Tonight? She had to have been killed before the rubble fell on that. Oh, right, now I remember. There was no R at the end. It was just a slip of the finger. My bad. <laughs> Stop saying my bad! Come back, my beautiful contradiction. Mr. Wright, I'm not just so sure it was just a simple slip of the finger. You have something for me, Athena? I sense that he's extremely agitated, almost panicked. He does look pretty flustered. Well, Mr. Wright, it appears it was nothing more than a mere mistake. I don't know. Did he really just make a typo? What about that R? Did Mr. Tony really see it? He saw it. Maybe Mr. Tony really did see the R. If there's no R anywhere in this bloody writing. What's going on here? Now that's now that I take another good look at the photo, I think maybe. Yeah, see, because it's like cut off. That's it! He looks so terrified in this face. Like this is cut this is enough this is an image enough to like absolutely scare you. That still frame. Like, what? Oh no! Terrible things are happening. Ah! What is it now, Mr. Wright? Are you trying to imitate Apollo and his cords of steel? I've got it. So that's what happened. A slip of the finger. 
Is that really all it was? Because I don't think so. I propose that Mr. Tonight really did see the letter R. But the photo clearly shows that there is no R. No, Your Honor. Actually, just the opposite is true. The photo shows that Mr. Tonate actually could have seen the R. If you're going to make that claim, then you'd better be able to point out what you mean. Gladly. Which part of the photo shows that Mr. Tonate could have seen the R? Right here. Take that! Please look here, to the right of the five. Do you see a little bit of red? Oh, I see it. Just on the edge where the floor is broken. That's the R that Mr. Tony saw. Objection. It's true that the Winx wears some very, very odd goggles. But that doesn't mean his eyesight is bad, nor his brain power. What part of that little smudge looks like an R to Objection. But when Mr. Tonate saw wasn't that little smudge. There was a whole and complete R written there. Before the floor was damaged by the explosion. Oh, that explains it. Care to explain what you mean? Because you just proposed that everything happened in the exact opposite order. Yep, because that's the way it really went down. The timing of when the R was written turns everything about this case around. Now then, if the floor was damaged by the explosion, when was the message written? Before the explosion. With a bloody message running off the edge of the damaged floor like that? that it was written before the explosion. But that's ridiculous! If that were true, that overturns your own premise. That's right. It does. In fact, it turns everything upside down. The victim was not killed by the explosion in the courtroom. She was killed before the explosion ever occurred. Order, order in the court! What kind of preposterous claim is that? Have you forgotten that the victim's body was found at the scene of the explosion? Objection! True, but consider this scenario. She was hit on the head and killed before the explosion, or even before the trial began. Her body was subsequently placed in the courtroom ruins after the bombing occurred. That way it could be made to look like she was a victim of the blast. What?! We had better look into what the victim was doing before the trial. Mr. Payton did an incident of arm before the trial. Let's see, uh, according to the police report, uh, here it is. One person. One person saw the victim before the trial. And that person was Ted Tonate. No one besides Mr. Tonate saw the victim? Th that appears to be the case, Your Honor. How did she write the message if she was moved into the court? Like, was she knocked unconscious and then she wrote the message and then the explosion happened? I don't... I don't see where it's going here. I would now like to ask the court to recall something. Specifically, Mr. Tonate's words from yesterday. Transporting the bomb. Oh my! Mr. Tonate, just before the trial you were with the victim. The two of you were together at the scene of the crime courtroom number four. Gobbledygook. Your Honor, the defense requests new testimony from Mr. Tonate. We wish to hear what he has to say about his whereabouts just before the trial. Mr. Tonate, your testimony, please. My testimony, there is no need for... He's completely unnerved, Mr. Wright. He must have hit the nail on the head. Because of the... All I did was transport the bomb to the courtroom. I learned to blah blah God blast this thing! I was only in the courtroom with the victim because of our war. I swear I was only transporting the bomb there. Objection! You and the victim were alone together to see the crime. In other words, you certainly had the opportunity to commit murder, did you not? Objection! Do you always leave yourself so open to attacks, Mr. Wright? What now, Mr. Payne? You Payne? Yes, Mr. Tony may have had the opportunity to kill Detective R. But an important piece of your assertion is missing. What's an important piece? The murder weapon. 
What do you claim was used to kill the victim? Mr. Payton has a point. Even Mr. Tony had a chance without a weapon. You can't accuse him of the crime. What is it? No weapon, no crime now? Instead of no body, no crime? Well, Mr. Tonate. Oh, uh, yes, that's right. I didn't have any sort of thing that could be used as a murder weapon on me. I couldn't possibly have killed Detective Arm. You really have nothing you could use as a murder weapon? What about the case? Hmm. Hmm. What is it, Athena? Just looking over the victim's autopsy report. I'm hoping there's something in here that can point us in the right direction. Well, it does say that she died from trauma to the back of the head with a flat object. Yeah, and to inflict that specific kind of injury. All you could need is a flat surface, right? A heavy blunt object with a flat surface could definitely be our murder weapon. Well, Mr. Wright, can you indicate for the corpse what was used to kill the farm? Or the bomb itself? I believe I can. I believe being the keyboard here. You can. Then please do so. What did Mr. Tennant have that could have been used as the murder? Oh, what about the remote? Is that why it's missing? Take that! Nope, that's not it. Don't be ridiculous. It narrows my candidates down by one! Okay, alright. It's the case. I should've- Again! Always! Every time! I'm like, go with my gut! And then I don't do it. Okay, the case. The case itself. Take that. Is flat and heavy. Apparently not. I was right- Okay, so I wasn't right the first time or the third time, but I was right the second time. It's the bomb! <laughs> Please hold. <laughs> well, I. This is the first case, man. Oh! Oh! The details! The, the weight! The alloy plating! 10 inches by 10 inches by 10 inches! Take that! That's why I told us all of that informa pointless information! <laughs> Sorry, guys. I. Whew, man. I am. I am out of sorts. I am, uh. needing to get back into this. This is the first case, and I'm like. Losing all the health. Didn't I say last time that this ga this game was easier <laughs> than the other games? It's fine. <clears throat> I'm good. Mr. Tony! I should have gone with my gut. The second time, not my first gut. Actually, it's funny though. It was my first gut because I was thinking the bomb first, but I didn't say it out loud. And then I was like, oh, the case. And then I was like, nope, the bomb. Or, or the bomb, even though that was my first gut. So yeah, it really was. Go with my gut. I'm, I... I always doubt myself. Or, you know, don't follow through. I need to follow through. If I've learned anything playing these games uh, for you guys. Mr. Tonate, you say you didn't have anything that could be used as a weapon, but in fact, you had the perfect thing. <laughs> what? Oh, sorry, I was using Payne's voice. What? What the devil are you talking about? You had this. Th that's the bomb. I thought you were trying to prove that the victim wasn't killed by the bomb blast. Not by the blast, Your Honor. The bomb blast, no. But I believe Candace Arm was killed with this bomb. Because this is the blunt object that delivered the fatal blow to her head. Please recall the description of Detective Arm's head wound. Trauma to the back of the head, caused by impact with a flat object. We assume this injury was sustained with her head on when, the when her head hit the floor. But a blow from any flat side of this bomb would produce the exact same wound pattern. Yeah. <laughs> they always laugh. Dude, you're gonna explode something over there. Stop playing with a bomb like that. What's with him? And show me some proof. Where's the evidence that I hit the victim with the bomb? He's right. I don't have anything decisive. Did you find any of the victim's blood in the bomb? 
have a pizza size of fruit. But too bad, the bomb was blown to bits. It's long gone. Boom. Game over. Yeah. Mm. Mr. Wright! Is there really nothing on the bomb in the photo? I don't see any blood or anything. Wait, the timer display is a little broken here. Oh, it is. Maybe it broke when it made contact with the detective arm's head. It's definitely a distinct possibility. Unless we find a fragment with the victim's blood on it, it's not going to count. <sighs> I guess you're right. Setting off the bomb, Tony managed to obliterate all traces of the murder weapon. What in the world do I do now? In times like this, I've got to change gears and look at things in a different way. Instead of looking for the things that he wasn't able to hide, I should be looking for a way to expose the things he did hide. Ted Tonate murdered Detective Arm before the trial started. Then he placed her body in the courtroom after the bomb went off. I'm gonna save very quickly. Just in case I mess up. Which means there was something he needed to keep hidden until then. But I think I have just the thing. Time to present that photo, which shows exactly what Mr. Tony had to hide. Oh, damn it, I wasn't I wasn't paying attention because I was worried about messing up. He placed your body in the courtroom after the bomb went off, which means there's something he needed to help keep hidden until the bomb went off. What was it? Her body, right? Unless it was this. Okay, I'm back. Um, see, the thing is, if he's... If he successfully hid something, why would I have the evidence of it? But maybe it's the body? Like... How she died specifically and when she died specifically because if she died before the bomb went off then that's assuming that the bomb went off to hide her right which is what the opening cutscene kind of oh okay this is different dialogue implied was all I was gonna say the opening cutscene implied I am so sorry, you guys. Wow. Uh, I'm doing so poorly on the first case of the game. I gotta shake off the rust, I guess. Yikes. Oh boy. Your Honor, there's something we've all been overlooking. If the murder took place before the trial, then Mr. Tony would have had to hide the body somewhere during the trial. Hey, you're right! And if we can figure out where that hiding place was... Exactly. We might be able to find some evidence we can pin him down with. But still, if she... If she wrote the na the number... Oh, I've been thinking this entire time that her body was in the case. Take that! Wait, a box big enough for a body. A box that was in the courtroom the whole time. A box nobody would touch if they thought there was a bomb in it. Mr. Tonate. What is it? Do you finally have some decisive evidence to show me? No, you're the one who's going to show it to me. Come again. You heard me. Now show me what's inside that bomb transport case. Ooh, we might have that little piece of the bomb. But, what? No, there's no need. I've got him now. Just before the trial, you killed the victim with a blunt object. And then you placed her body in the ruins of the courtroom after the bomb went off. Clearly you were trying to make it look like she died in the explosion. But where was the body hidden during the trial? Uh oh I hadn't thought of that. The answer is right here. Inside a box made of thick alloy plating that can stand any impact. Uh, no, that's uh, completely false. If it's false, you should have no objections to showing us your transport case. So, let's open it up and take a look inside, shall we? That's not... not if you value your life. What's he up to now? Remain calm and listen carefully. This bomb will detonate in five minutes. What? 
Huh? I repeat. This HH-3000 will detonate in five minutes. What's going on? Your Honor, I recommend you adjourn this trial before this bomb goes off. Mr. Tonator, are you... Are you threatening me? Eh, eh, eh. I am the only one who can disable this bomb. If you do not want to die, your only option is to listen to me. But Mr. Tony, didn't you just say that that's a training model, a fake to practice on? I did, but I also lied. This is the real deal. This is the HH-3000. But the HH-3000 was used to blow up courtroom number four, wasn't it? How do you know it was the real HH-3000 that blew up courtroom number four? Huh? The bomb that blew up the courtroom was a different one. One that I made. Are you admitting to something here? <laughs> what? Then are we to take that as a confession on your part? Take it any way you would like. Just before the trial, I took the HH-3000 out of the stuffed animal and put my own bomb into it. That was the bomb that exploded and destroyed courtroom number four. M Mr. Tony, please be reasonable. Do you really expect us to believe a crazy story like that? The HH-3000. It is so unique. I had never seen anything like it. It is so unique that I could not replicate the detonation mechanism. So I just had to have it. Besides, did anyone look inside the stuffed animal during the trial? Did anyone check to see if it really was the HH-3000 in there? I must confess no one opened the stuffed animal to check. So it really is a possibility that the bomb was switched out? No, not a possibility. A certainty. I did it. So he's had a real bomb with him this whole time? You had better get out here, out of here, while you can. You do not have much time. Order, order in the court! I'm out of here! It's gonna blow! Run! Man, no one's gonna ever come into the courtroom again. Holy cow. You four are still here. Well, well. Aren't you brave? Uh, I just wanted to for the judge presiding over this court to run. But that horrible explosion the other day. The judge looks like he's about to book it for the nearest exit any second. Mr. Payne. Uh, that is... Ah! Well, he ran off. And he's off! Mr. Wright, what do we do? Pathetic to run now, wouldn't it? B but the bomb might really go off. Only three more minutes, folks. Is that bomb really the HH3000? What should I do? Run like a yellow belly chicken! <laughs> I think it's telling me to stay. Can't run now. Well, it's been fun, but I will be going now. My dear, dear H3000, naturally. Oh, and by the way, I would advise against having me followed. Even with no remote switch, this bomb can still be triggered manually. If I think I am being followed, I will detonate it on the spot. Farewell. Uh, we get, um, no. Hold it! You're not going anywhere, Ted Tonate. Oh. Your Honor, there's no reason to be afraid. That bomb's a fake. Uh, are you sure, Mr. Wright? More of your famous bluffing. Even at the risk of your own life. Mr. Wright, none of your bluffing now. Not a time like this. Lives are on the line here. I'm not bluffing. And I have proof. Y you do? Yes, of course, Your Honor. It's right here in the photo of the bomb. Clear as day. Proof that Mr. Tonate's bomb is not the real HH-3000. Oh, because it's not... broken. Out with it, then, immediately. He just showed us the timer. It's not broken. Nicely done. Take that! The display for the timer and the bombs in the photo is broken. Most likely it broke when Mr. Tony choose the bomb to attack Detective Arm. But the display on the bomb in front of us is not broken. Oh, you're right! Therefore, this is not the real HH-3000. Mr. Tony was clearly lying when he said he switched out the bomb into stuffed animal. The real HH-3000 blew up in courtroom number four. This bomb is nothing more than a fake. A model used for training purposes. 
It's a nice try, though. You admit it to everything. Fear not, Your Honor. I will examine the inside of the bomb transport case myself. Yes, please do that, Mr. Wright. No! Stop! Ooh, what is that? Is that a blood stain? Just as I expected. Your lies have all been blown, blown to bits, Mr. Tonate. I'm confident DNA analysis on this bloodstain will confirm that it's Detective Arm's blood. And that those results will conclusively prove that you murdered Detective Arm. Um... How about it, Mr. Tonate? Think you can dismantle this decisive evidence? Dismantle it? Haha! <laughs> You're too late! You missed your chance to run, so now you're out of time. This HH-3000 is about to explode. Don't try to threaten us, Mr. Tonate. I've already proved that your bomb is a fake. It's real! This bomb is the real thing, I tell you. It's real! Ha 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 ha! Mad bomber, party of one. There's no time left. It's going to blow. I have to disarm it. I have to take it apart. I can dismantle anything. I can take it apart evidence. I can take apart bombs. I can dismantle it all. Dismantle, 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 dismantle. I'm not gonna make it. Nothing thing left to do. Stop. Ouch. Do you hit it with his chin? What happened to the whole, like, I can do it in five seconds? M made it! I feel like that would detonate the bomb if you, like, slammed yourself into it like that. Ooh. Game. Over. Dismantle. Attempt. Failed. Are those his eyes? <laughs> it's all over. My life has been blown to pieces. That's really spooky. Ooh. It's all that stupid woman's fault. I was selling the bombs I disarmed on the black market. When I tried to take this one, she just had to notice, didn't she? She confronted me in courtroom number four that day. That's why I had no choice. Before I knew what I was doing, I hit her. It's all her fault. While I was looking for a place to hide her body, she left a message in her own blood. The trial was about to start, so I didn't have time to clean it up. Now all this. Oh, okay, so she... She was- they were in the courtroom when she- okay. They were in the courtroom, then he put her body in the box. Okay, I guess that makes sense. I thought for sure I could disguise her death with an explosion. And that stupid defense attorney started sticking his nose into my business. After my testimony yesterday, I went to courtroom number four and... I found the kid all over my bomb transport case. So I snuck up behind him. Bam! And when the idiot police arrested that little girl, I thought for sure I could... Why? Ted Tonate, you are hereby under arrest. On suspicion of the courtroom bombing and the assault on Mr. Justice. Your innocence or guilt will be determined at a later trial. Even though you admitted to everything just now. Now then, I see the numbers of the public have returned to the gallery. One person, however, seems to still be running far, far away. Be that as it may. I will now announce Mr. Jennifer Wood's verdict. Not guilty! Yay! Confetti! Zoom out! Because it's cool in 3D now. Aw, she looks so happy. Look at us. We're just like... So <laughs> of 
court is adjourned. Sorry, I was wiggling it around a little bit with the uh, 3D. You did it, boss! Yeah, I guess we managed to pull it off somehow. So many mysteries cleared up all at once. It was amazing! It just sort of worked out that way, didn't it? It's not the kind of thing that usually just works out. You made it happen! And the way that mean old prosecutor hightailed it out of there, that was great! Mr. Wright, Lena, thank you for everything you did for me. I'm so happy for you, Junie! Now you can go back home to the forest in peace! Both of you will come and visit me there sometime. That would be nice. Thank you for the invitation. Hmm. I don't know, Mr. Wright. I'm not so sure you could make it all the way up to Junie's house. How high up do you live again, Junie? Um, around 3,000 feet, I think. What? That's no force. That's a mountain. I think you might still be afraid of heights. But you know, boss... There's something that still bothers me about the case. One little mystery we never got around to solving. Well, that, yeah. I was wondering about that, too. Is this the unsolved mystery you're thinking of? I hate it when they give me these. But I can save it this time. So, ha. Is it the rhinoceros? Like where the rhinos went. Huh? That wasn't the thing I was talking about. Oh no! Oh, the missing remote switch! That's right. I'm glad it didn't completely. See, I was worried about Genie's stuffed animal. Call me crazy. I was wondering about the missing remote switch. Oh, right. That's unsolved mystery. Haha, <laughs> I was just testing you. Oh, so you're looking to get a reaction on me, huh? Now, now, always remember, the trial isn't really over until you get back to the office. Even if you get a not guilty, so have to remember to stay sharp. In other words, don't glow too much over a victory, right, boss? Thanks for the tip. But I still wonder where that remote switch disappeared to. Maybe Mr. Tony just got rid of it somewhere. Yeah, it's a pretty big thing to leave unsolved, though. Okay, so it doesn't... See, in the, in, the last ga in the past games, they just kind of were like, Nope, that's not what I was talking about. Oh well, I guess we're done. So this one is actually like saying what the answer was. It's weird that it didn't give me another chance. Like, oh no, not that. There's something else. Like it would if I, you know, lost health in the, in the trial. Well, let's leave it up to the police to find. Hopefully we'll find out someday. I guess you're right. Hey, I know! Junie, shall we go report the good news? No, to that certain someone. Okay. Huh? Her grandmother? No, silly to Apollo! Oh, right. Well, why don't we all go to the hospital together to see him? Great idea! I bet he's bored out of his mind. Okay. <laughs> and so the courtroom bombing case came to a close. But the next trial was just over the horizon. There's never a dull moment so many lawyers in the office. That's for sure. Apollo Justice, Athena Sykes, and me, Phoenix Wright. Between the three of us, there's no case we can't solve. When our powers combine, we're an unstoppable team. At least, that's what I believed. That was... ominous. What? <laughs> what? What's wrong? But all of that changed what Apollo said to us that day. Oh. I forgot that this that this happened here and now. Wow. Wow. We're, we're jumping right into the storyline of this game, guys. There is no fluff. It was something that would put my faith in us to the ultimate test. Why is the date and time questionable? Oh boy. 
sorry, but I'll be taking a leave of absence. Wait, what do you mean by a leave? Can you at least give me a reason why? I can only say that this is something I must settle on my own. Why, Apollo? Why are you shutting us out? I know. I know why. Yeah, it gets all... What happens to you, Apollo? Ever since you put that jacket on... Changed. And now, for whatever reason, all my mind keeps doing is returning to the day I first met you. We had tackled our first case together, he and I, this past spring. And as we did, I came to know who he is and how he thinks. It was a very peculiar case. One in which the victim was killed by a mythical creature. It gives a little hint for the next case, I guess. Mythical creature. I feel like I remember part of parts of it. Like, I, I remember, like, a piece of evidence or something, but I don't remember anything else. Um, yeah, no, it gets it gets all, like... Also, with the... I feel like the animated cutscenes makes it all more intense, too, because you can actually hear the emotions, and then there's, like, the music in the background, and they like, Oh, no! What happened? And all of that sort of, like, super dramatic stuff going on. But, yeah, it gets super dramatic now. Um... Uh, it's always been, you know, it, oddly, like, surprisingly dark and intense at times, the series, uh, despite all of the goofy characters and, like, the fun jokes and, and humor and stuff, uh, it's always been, um, it's always had that kind of underlining seriousness because, like I said, the, the serious sort of, um, subject matter with the court and stuff. Uh, but yeah, this one, I feel like it, it brings it up like several notches on the dramatic zone, which I think a lot of people didn't like these newer games, um, for multiple reasons. I don't know what specifically, I think maybe just the games themselves or them doing too many things with it. Uh, but I enjoyed it. Like, <laughs> like I said, I love these games. So whenever a new one comes out, it's, it's like watching... You know, it's like staying in the world of your of your characters and stuff, and, and seeing them again. And yes, there are things that have that have changed, and years have passed, and you won't see the same um, like random witnesses or whatever. Like the, those those people that tend to pop up all the time in the in the past games. Um, there's less of that because now we're kind of. I guess it makes sense that we're kind of an Apollo story because I was saying like, oh, people call this the Apollo Justice trilogy. And I'm like, really? I didn't know that it was considered that. And then I saw that it was actually official that they call it that. Um, but you can already see that there's some storyline happening with Apollo. There's, of course, storyline happening with Athena because she is new. Um, and it kind of just goes from there. So uh, welcome back to Ace Attorney. And welcome to the more dramatic and intense shenanigans I guess I shouldn't call them shenanigans because it's all dramatic and intense. Dramatic, intense events and usual shenanigans that will happen with these characters. Um, and I hope that you are intrigued and will stick around because, like I said, we've got a lot ahead of us. Two more full games and, uh, and I'm going to enjoy every part of them. I don't know how long they're going to be. This episode has already been going on for a pretty long time. 
that might be partially my fault because I was failing miserably. Hopefully I'll get better. Uh, but we're going to see a little bit more of, like, true Apollo uh, in the next case because it's a flashback. So it's not really, like, dark, mysterious Apollo with, who's all angsty for whatever reason. It, it'll it get to there. Um, but, yeah, and we get, to, we get to hang out with Athena some more and see what her uh, stuff is. Um, so I'm, I'm very excited for you guys to meet these characters and uh, fully and to find out about uh, the stories that um, they have because it is it is dramatic and intense and I like it. <laughs> I'm not I'm not ashamed. I like it. It's fun. Uh, it's it's fun when they get, do um, you know a little bit like higher stakes. You know are always interesting to see and see what uh, how the characters. Uh, react to and interact with uh, such a thing so we shall see so uh I guess that's it for episode one. Oh, I guess my thoughts on episode one um yeah it was a good a good for the tutorial um it jumped to a lot of things that are going to pop up in the rest of the game like we saw Athena's trauma we saw um Apollo quit and we saw the return of Phoenix Wright so like there's a lot of stuff that's just like thrown at you like okay this is what this game is about and I think that um that giving us a little taste of everything like that uh, really keeps you wanting to continue and watch or at least it does for me hopefully it does for you too because you know then you then you will stay and come back and watch more episodes um so yeah I liked it it was a decent case uh despite my random issues that I had with it flailing about um but I just I'm just a little rusty that's all I gotta I gotta get back into things so I will hopefully do better next time I will talk to you guys then